Good evening. We are back to the Spirit's Book. Um, we are on uh, Book Two, The Spirit Life. And uh, on Book Two, we are starting today Chapter Seven. You, you know the, how the, the chapters uh, go over our you know, life in the spiritual world, return to the spiritual world. And this Chapter Seven talks about return to physical life. So we talk about what happens when the spirit prepares and when it enters in the physical body, uh, what happens during, before the return, during the, the, the pregnancy and after pregnancy and uh, what happens to the body and, uh, and uh, imperfections of the body and, and so on and so forth. So we have a long journey to go on this chapter here. Philip, can you start 3.30? Before the return, do spirits know when they are supposed to reincarnate? They have a sense of that return as a blind person feels the heat of a fire he is approaching. They know that they reincarnate as you know that you will die, but they do not know when the change will occur. See number 166. Is reincarnation therefore a necessity of spirit life, as death is a necessity of corporal life? Surely it is so. So reincarnation is part of the, of the divine laws. We know that we have to reincarnate until we reach uh, the level of perfection. When we no longer need to reincarnate, we may incarnate on special missions like Jesus reincarnated on earth. Um, spirits know that they are supposed to reincarnate. You, you have to, uh, you cannot generalize because there are spirits that go back to the spiritual world go back to a new incarnation without, without fully understanding that they are reincarnating, without going through this uh, conscious process. And there, there are spirits that um, have more understanding and they actually participate in the reincarnation planning uh, and are able to make choices according to their level of evolution. So what the Spirit tells us here that uh, the, the, the comparison they make is with a blind person that feels the heat of fire approaching, meaning uh, <coughs> when you ask someone uh, that is uh, a living uh, being, uh, incarnated being, uh, we all know that we are going to die. But when we have death is approaching, we have a sense that death is approaching, but we don't know exactly when it will happen. So the spirits tells us that it's the same thing that happens to spirits in the spiritual world. They have a sense of, uh, of the, the reincarnation process of the, the, the reincarnation approaching, but um, they do not know exactly when it will happen and how it will happen, okay? Uh, again, if, if you don't understand and you don't accept the, the idea of reincarnation, you are going to enter into the process in an unconscious uh, level. If you are aware, you can be more conscious and be more participating. Okay. 331? Uh, yep. Do all spirits worry about their reincarnation? This depends on their degree of advancement. Some never give it a thought and know nothing about it. In some cases, the uncertainty of the future is an atonement in itself. So, of course, uh, spirits worry about their reincarnation. Uh, do incarnates worry about uh, the time of, the, of, of their, the death of the physical body? They do. Uh, because of many of those are, are entering to, into the unknown. When you are about to reincarnate, you are also uh, coming into the unknown. Even if you are aware of the process, uh, you, are, you have some degree of anxiety depending on your level of evolution. If you know that you are going to have a difficult reincarnation because of, uh, of, of the challenges and the trials and atonements you have to go through, 
of course you are going to worry and you are going to be concerned. Now, more evolved spirits, those that come in on a mission, of, will worry much less because they are more aware of uh, their their role in the evolution of uh, of uh, humanity and their role in their personal evolution. So they face the challenge with a more uh, with more peace of mind. And again. Uh, we compare to the process of discarnation, it's not much different, right? You have def different levels of people that are more or less prepared for the death of their physical bodies. Uh, the spirits tells us here that the uncertainty of the future is an atonement, meaning the, the, the fact that you are not aware of what's going to happen to you and you become concerned about it, you, you make... Uh, even a, an unconscious effort to, to do better next time, to, to reduce your level of anxiety. Like when you are here, you, 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 know, you are going to travel to a foreign country that you have no knowledge about. So you are super anxious. You start studying about the country, the customs, the, the habits, the the, how they live, what they do. So your level of anxiety diminishes as you understand better what you are going to face, but you still have some anxiety. Uh, it's more or less the same with the reincarnation. You have an anxiety of entering into the unknown and not sure of what's going to happen to you, okay? Okay, 3.32. Can a spirit hasten or delay its reincarnation? It may hasten it by a strong, faithful desire, as there are spineless and indifferent spirits, just like regular people. It may delay it if it shies away from the trial assigned to it, but it cannot do so freely. It suffers for this hesitation, just as a sick person, as sick people suffer when they fail to use the remedy that can cure them. Okay, this translation was not uh, done very well. Um, the first phrase, yes, it may hasten it by a strong fatal desire. And uh, the second and third phrases should be only one. It may delay if it shies away from the trial sign to you as there are spineless and indifferent people, spirits like just regular people but they cannot do it uh, so freely, meaning there are consequences of delaying the process. So what they say here is that um, when you are back in the spiritual world, you have your free will. And with your free will, you can uh, participate in the process of your next reincarnation in the, the timing of it. You can hasten or you can delay it. And some spirits delay it uh, even unconsciously out of an of a, a, a unconscious fear of what they are going to face. But of course, you know, when you delay things, you will always have to face consequence of the delays. And uh, by delaying your reincarnation, you can make it more difficult when you, you finally come because it's a natural law, you have to come. So the, the the spirits, the protecting spirits know the ideal time for us to come. Uh, if we try to anticipate or we delay, we may face more difficult challenges uh, that uh, we were supposed to, to, to face in a natural process, okay? I hope it, it, it was, it made, it made it a little better here, more clear because the answer is not very clear. Okay. 333. Yep. If a spirit is happy enough as an average among errant spirits, could it stay in that state indefinitely? No, not indefinitely. Eventually the spirit feels the need to advance. All spirits have to evolve because it is their destiny. Yeah, the question here, there is a missing word there. It's a spirit is happy enough as an average spirit. Um, 
you know, when you are there in the spiritual world, you are, you know, you're not really, it's not really great, but it's not really bad. So why change? Let me stay here. Um, I'm not, not uh, you know, I'm not disturbing anyone. I'm not making much of a much work. So don't bother me. Let me stay here. <laughs> That's what where we find some spirits. If they are happy with what they are doing, in in the sense of uh, uh, of a laziness of not worrying much about what's going to happen and not wanting to make an effort. Uh, but that. You know, we get tired of everything. So this state will last for a while, and eventually the spirit will get tired and will make uh, an unconscious effort or a conscious effort to change things, and then the reincarnation process uh, starts. Uh, it's the same uh, when what what we talk about spirits that uh, don't want to be helped, right? That spiritual assistance is always uh, is always there, but the spirit has to open itself to be assisted. Here we have these spirits that are really um, not wanting to to do much, and uh, they can postpone for for a while uh, their reincarnation, like we we saw in the previous question, uh, according to their free will. But again, the natural law is perfect, and eventually. We'll have to follow the natural law, and uh, and we can be uh, nudged into a new in re reincarnation if we if we try to 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 run away from it at a, at, at a certain point. We will have to to reincarnate, even if we are not aware of the process, and we are thrown into a new reincarnation without be understanding what's going on. Okay. 334. Yep. Is the union of a soul with a given body predestined or is the choice of a body made at the last moment? The spirit is always assigned beforehand. Spirits choose the trials they will endure and request to reincarnate. God who sees and knows all things has foreseen that this soul would be united to that particular body. Okay. The spiritual world has an organization that is much, much superior to the organization we have in the physical world. As I always say, we are a bad copy of the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. So we, imagining that the process of reincarnation is, is done you know, without any organization, it's... Um, you know, it's not clearly understanding how the spiritual world works. Uh, the union of a spirit with a given physical body, it's planned in the spiritual world. Again, the majority of reincarnations follows the conveyor belt, as uh, we always uh, say, right? Uh, it's a natural process that the reincarnations happen. But in this conveyor belt, Everything is done according to the natural law. So you are going to be reincarnated amongst uh, those that you need to be uh, with. Your family members will be um, loved ones or enemies of, of the past. Uh, one or two new spirits that are going to be there either to help you or to, for you to be helped. So this is all in a way planned beforehand. Uh, it's not that uh, you, you are going to choose in a rush and then you come to a new incarnation. Again, plans change, things happen, even in the spiritual world. And there may be one or another event that the, the reincarnation is done in a more um, <coughs> rush way let's say for lack of better words but um, in general the reincarnation process is 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 organized and and assisted in the spiritual world and it goes through the natural process that uh, uh, that the organization there uh, follows the rules as we we see studying the books of andrea luis okay questions here comments 
Yeah, I have a comment. Um, it's very hard to reconcile the idea on the previous answer that spirits can hasten and delay their uh, reincarnation with this answer now. And I think you explained that very well, by the way. <clears throat> that, well, everything's planned. Uh, we can understand the complexity of this plan because it has it's involved a group of all the spirits, not like discarnated. Discarnated, you die, that's it, right? To go back to the spiritual world. To reincarnate, no, it requires a, a, a lot more involvement, even of all the spirits. We're going to have to have parents, right? <laughs> You're not going to come out from that. You're going to have to somewhat, the parents have to provide the, 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 the proper genetic material that will kind of create the physical body that you require to fulfill whatever trials you need to go through or missions you have to go through um, anyway. So it's, it's a lot more complex. And to imagine that we could some, somewhat hasten or delay that, it becomes very difficult to understand. It's obvious that it does. Uh, I remember one scenario of um, of one woman who was being obsessed by a group of spirits, and this group of spirits actually uh, induced a man to rape that woman, and she was at the period of ovulation, and at that moment she became pregnant for the second after that rape, and one of the persecutors of her that was there. Uh, inducing that man to perform that crime become immediately atta attached to, to that um, to that zygote at the moment of that conception. Was that planned? We can imagine that the good spirituality would plan a crime, an aggression, a violence like that. But since the crime was committed, they used the opportunity to pair that woman with one, one, of, one of her obsessors, which naturally they had a relationship in the past that needs to be resolved as well. Example, Elmo, I like that, thanks. I think that's a very interesting explanation that shows exactly what well, this happens and and you can imagine this spirit that was uh, in a way forced to reincarnate was not planning to reincarnate and was not um, interested in reincarnating right and then it you know it got caught in the act and and very interesting much of the contrary his associates the group of those trying those trying to hurt this woman they were trying to force an abortion and doing everything to separate them. And was through the intervention of the good spirituality, they actually convinced that spirit to go through and to accept that situation that would be the best for him. And then they were able to break himself from the rest of the group and, and continue with that pregnancy. Okay, so we have to remember as we go through these questions that this is the first uh, first questions uh, about reincarnation to the spirits. We don't have any any idea before that. Of course, the books of Andre Luis and other books will explain you know, go into much more detail. But at that time, we knew nothing about reincarnation. We just you know knew that reincarnation existed. Uh, as most of the other religions that believe in reincarnation nowadays, they talk, talk about reincarnation, but they have no idea how it works. So Kardec asking the questions, these are natural questions to be asked, very intelligent questions to be asked to force the spirits to give us a, a guidance on, the, on how this process works. So I think it's important to remember because sometimes we look at these questions and, uh, we think, oh, but this is obvious, you know, 
Uh, we know that. Well, they didn't know anything at that time. I think it's very good to keep reminding ourselves and everyone else that they have to answer the average, the most common. They're not answering in terms of the exceptions, like reincarnated through a rape is an exception. So the, the spirits, when they give the answers, they give what's, what's happened normally, the most common. The same way that I always use the, the analogy, if asking can humans swim, the answer has to be yes. Do all humans swim? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next one, Philip. 3335. Can the spirit choose its body or does it only choose the kind of life it is to bear for its trial. A spirit may also choose a body because the imperfections of this body are trials that will further its advancement if it succeeds in overcoming the obstacles placed in its path. This choice is not always the spirit's to make, but it can ask. Can a spirit refuse to enter a body chosen for it at the last moment before reincarnation? If it refuses, it suffers much more than one who does not attempt to go through a trial. Okay. So uh, we, uh, again, book Missionaries of, of the Light. There is a whole chapter where Andrea Luis is the, in the reincarnation center. And he's talking uh, with some spirits that are planning, participating in the planning of the reincarnation. Of course, those are the exceptions, what Elmo just said there. But the exceptions will give us details on how, uh, how the process is done. So a spirit may ask for a body that uh, has some uh, imperfections that will make their life more challenging and will help them overcome the, the imperfections they have. Uh, but again, the choice, the spirit doesn't have complete freedom of choice because there are some limitations. Of course, there are the parents' limitations because you have the inherit from the parents the, your characteristics. So if the parents don't have what you need, you're not going to have it. And, um, and there is uh, the, the, the understanding of our spiritual guides of what can we deal with. If they know if we are asking too much, we are going to have a, a, a good chance of failing. So they are not going to, uh, to allow us to come with, uh, with more than we can handle. Uh, the second question is an interesting one, right? Can a spirit refuse to enter a body chosen for it at the last moment? Uh, yes, it can. Uh, and, you know, you, 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 can, you can think of different things that can happen there, right? The, the, if the, the mother is pregnant and the, ref, the spirit refuses to enter the body, the most likely scenario is that uh, she's going to have a miscarriage, a very early miscarriage. She may not even be aware that she was pregnant because the miscarriage will happen in the very beginning of the pregnancy. Um, but for the spirit, it is a serious uh, consequence, right? How do, does a spirit refuse to enter a body, right? If, uh, if we're talking about the spirit losing the the, the awareness in the process of, of entering into a, re, a new reincarnation. Well, uh, when you fixed, fix your mind on a thought and you, know, you, you get to a point that uh, you really focus on not allowing yourself to be connected to the new physical body and you kind of create a a mono idea focused only on it, you can succeed in preventing the, the reunion to happen, the attachment to the, 
to the new uh, physical body that is being formed. Again, these are exceptions of the exceptions, okay? But uh, we're just saying that it can happen because they, they ask here. But if it happens, it creates a serious consequences for the spirit because you are wasting a, an a golden opportunity of a new reincarnation. Remember, we have three more times spirits in the spirit, spiritual world around Earth than incarnated. So there are many spirits that are really wanting to have an opportunity to reincarnate. And if they, a spirit is wasting this opportunity, you have to face the consequences. Like we always say here, cause and consequence, we face the consequence of our actions. Because someone that refuses to enter a body is making a conscious choice. And with this conscious choice, there are serious consequences. That's what the spirits are telling us, that um, it, it suffers more than one that does not even attempt to go through a trial because of uh, fear. So, you know, this is a spirit that uh, was placed in a position to go into a, a new opportunity and refused the opportunity at last moment. Okay. I hope it was clear. The, the question, the answer, the explanation here. I don't know, Elmo, if you have anything to add. Yeah, I think in terms of responsibilities, in terms of uh, rebelliousness of the spirit or fear of the spirit, it's, it's, I'm afraid to say it's like, but it's like a suicide, right? That you, you kind of reject the opportunity to go to a trials, you rebel against the natural process of things and generate tremendous amount of serious consequences for that rebelliousness. I think the same thing here with when you reject the opportunity to go through what you need to go through out of rebelliousness or of fear of, of anything else. Three thirty six. Can a body about to be born not find a spirit willing to incarnate in it? God can provide for any possibility. Every child who is to be born alive is always predestined to have a soul. Nothing is created without a design. So, um, what they are saying here is that. Uh... When there is a pregnancy, there is a spirit associated with that physical body. There is a spirit um, assigned to that physical body that is starting to be informed. Uh, so every, as I say, every child who is to be born alive is always predestined to have a soul. The key word there, alive. Because if he said, if they said here, every child who is, who is to be born is always predestined to have a soul, means that all pregnancies have a spirit associated with the body. And in reality, there are exceptions. Rarely, but there are rare exceptions where the, the woman can get pregnant with no spirit attached to it. And we are going to see more on the next uh, chapter item when it talks about abortion. Uh, so what's the reason uh, of, of parents who have a, a pregnancy without a spirit attached to it? it will, it's, it's, a, it's an atonement, an expiation for the parents to have to go through this traumatic experience of, uh, you know, of, of having a, a stillborn baby or or a miscarriage in the, the late stages of the pregnancy when they see there is no uh, there is no life in the, the, the because the, the the fetus can be working fine without any any spirit associated to it, but it won't survive the, the, the being born. It been, it, it, if you don't have a spirit associated to the physical body, the physical body dies. So when it's in the pregnancy. State is connected to the mother and is feeding from the mother and everything. 
But again, this is, these are very rare exceptions, but it's important to, 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 to note here because the phrase says, every child who is to be born alive is always predestined to have a soul, okay? Nothing is created without a design, okay? Comments here? Okay. 337, does God ever enforce the union of a soul with a given body? Sometimes it is imposed in support of the different trials to be suffered by a spirit, especially when the latter is still too inferior to be able to make the choice for itself. As a form of atonement, a spirit may be forced to enter the body of a child that due to its birth and the circumstances it will encounter in the world, it will serve for the spirit as a way of atonement. Okay, so let's first, before we go into that, let's uh, make one thing very clear here. The union of a spirit with the body, it's done at the moment of conception, okay? Because sometimes these phrases can, you can may, may allow you to think that uh, you can be, be united with a body at a later stage. And it doesn't happen. You are, the spirit is connected to the, to the new, new uh, physical body that is being formed at the moment of conception, never later than that. Okay? So the natural laws, the question here is the natural laws can impose a reincarnation. Again, when the spirit doesn't have any idea of spirituality, of reincarnation, the more uh, primitive spirits, they go through this process in a normal process of reincarnation and death without fully understanding what's going on. So it, it, in a sense, it's being forced, the union of a spirit with a, with a physical body. Uh, because it follows the natural law. Uh, this can be used also as forms of atonement for spirits that are in need of having a, an incarnation that uh, it's going to be difficult for them, but will serve as an atonement. Uh, it is also an imposition of the natural laws uh, that will force them to a new reincarnation. Um, the there are some books uh, of of uh, of Divaldo that talk about uh, these reincarnation processes of very difficult uh, spirits in the spiritual world. I'm remembering specifically uh, the famous Marquis of Sad um, that uh, was reincarnated completely mentally and physically challenged uh, in, in the new incarnation. There is one of the books of Divaldo that tells his story because of the consequence of what he did when he was, uh, you know, uh, leaving uh, his previous incarnation. So this is a, a serious atonement for as a consequence of your past actions. Sometimes you have to come uh, uh, with a complete impossibility of acting on your free will because that's how you are going to to have an opportunity to, to repair the mistakes you made in your serious mistakes you made in your previous incarnation. Okay. Oh, I, I, have yes. so, I have a question. Yes, Paco. Okay. Now, can I say then that the body, which is, which is matter, so it comes from the cosmic fluid, so it's, it's been kind of, in quotations, manufactured, Okay, it's in actuality a tool that the spirit uses in order to go in order to go through certain experiences that will help him in his purification. Yes, yes, huh? exactly. What's that? that's the objective of reincarnation? Yes, that's it. exactly. exactly so, that. the, the, so the body itself is a tool. Yes. So the relative importance of the body is not really that that. Because it's a tool. If, yes. you res, if you resist the incarnation, they are they are primordial, primordial. Um, I would say uh, formulas to create another body. If, if you haste it or you speed it up, 
it doesn't really matter because eventually you'll have to go through all those experiences. Yes. Because what's important, make... what's, what's important is that, that, that you undergo the experience in order for you to be purified. Yeah, but you can make those experiences easier or more oh, difficult yeah, but, for you, nah, depending but, uh, on your, or react, and, your actions. And, and the spirit will pay its consequences. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly it. Uh, again, the physical body is an instrument. It's an instrument. It's, yeah. it's an instrument. But the, the physical body in, imposes constraints on the spirit to act on its, uh, its full capacity, right? Because we are more than what we are exteriorizing through this physical body. Uh, you know, you may be uh, a genius in an area where you are not a genius in this present incarnation because you need to develop other uh, abilities. Yes, yeah. other abilities, so, yes. Yeah, so your physical body is imposing restrictions on the fully full expression of you as a spirit. Exactly, yes. And, and it, you know, it, it, it all makes sense when we see, right, physically challenged, mentally challenged. The spirit is not mentally challenged. The physical body prevents exactly. the spirit to fully express itself. And the that, inability of, I... the, of the, the person to express itself is because the physical body is defective, right? Exactly, yeah. And sometimes we see... Um... You see uh, individuals who excel in areas that you would think, wow, how is that possible with so many limitations? <laughs> yes, yeah. Steve Hawkins. Exactly. That's a, that's a good example. Exactly. Yeah. So, so you see with uh, that uh, the, the physical body is not the spirit, right? Because with all the, the limitations of the physical body, he was able to live. Uh, a, a wonderful work to to help humanity, right? So exactly, the physical body may be a, an impediment, but uh, it it depends on the, the inability of the physical body. It doesn't prevent you from expressing other areas, right? And sometimes you develop other areas. You you, you talk about blind people being able to to hear better or to taste better and develop the, because when you don't have one of the senses, you develop the others, right? Exactly. So, That's very clear, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Go ahead. 338. If several spirits ask to be incarnated in a body that is about to be born, how would the decision be made among them? In such a case, God judges which spirit is best fit to fulfill the destiny appointed for the child. However, as I have already told you, the spirit is chosen before the moment in which it is to join the body. Okay. That's, so... that's, that's, that's a question that, I don't know, you know, like a question is kind of, because at the very end, <laughs> at the very end, however, on this end, it's telling him that actually the, our, the way I read it is that the spirit is telling, it kind of answers the question according to the expectations of, of the earth, uh, of the, the incarnated spirit, but at the end, it's, it, it's told him, the spirit is chosen before the moment. So it's already, it's already, it's already, it's already, is a perfect is a perfect design. That's my point. Yeah, but I was while well, I was reading this, I was thinking, um, of course, if we knowing that more spirits are in the spiritual world than we have the ability to to produce pregnancies here, uh, spirits wasting wanting an opportunity. It's it's logical that you would have more than one spirit interested in reincarnating mm -hmm. uh, in a specific. <laughs> um, with a specific uh, uh, body that is going to be formed. I was thinking a little bit more in the sense, let's think about, uh, let's say, Einstein. Einstein decides to have a child. 
<laughs> you know, how many spirits would love to be yeah. his children, right? <laughs> he, he may have not, you know, I think he wasn't a great father, actually, but... No, he was not. Heard, you, yeah, yeah I heard but, it's not, but, yeah. You know, but wouldn't you like to come as a son or daughter of Einstein to have an opportunity to inherit the, the, uh, the abilities in a sense of... Uh, of if you don't understand that what we come with is what we already have. So it doesn't mean that you are going to be a genius because you are a, a son or daughter of Einstein, because if you are not in, this, in the spiritual world, you're not going to be, you cannot get more than what you have from your parents, right? But in a sense of not understanding the whole process, you, uh, I was thinking about that as, uh, as an example of, uh, having more than one, several spirits wanting to be incarnated in a body that is about to be born. But again, uh, the, the natural law follows its, its, its uh, process, natural process. So a spirit that is chosen to be reincarnated is, is done. Uh, it's not just before the, the, the body is formed, but it, uh, sometime before. It's, it goes through a whole uh, planning and a whole uh, process. Unless... You know, like the example, the exceptions, like the example that Elmo gave earlier about the rape and the spirit that was uh, kind of, of forced to reincarnate. But in, in general, the, the, the planning goes for a while and, uh, and way before the pregnancy, there is already a spirit assigned to the future physical body that is going to be formed there. Okay. 339? Yep. Is car incarnation marked by confusion similar to what follows a spirit's separation from the body? Much greater and longer. At death, the spirit is released from slavery. At birth, the spirit re-enters it. Yes. That's important. Again, we're talking general terms here. Okay, yeah. let's not uh, talk about the exceptions. In general terms, you die, you go back to the spiritual world after a period of confusion that can last some days, uh, maybe some weeks, you awake, uh, you regain your full consciousness in the spiritual world and you are aware that uh, you have returned to the spiritual world that your physical body is dead. In general terms. Now, for the uh, spirit that is going to be reborn, uh, Besides nine months of the pregnancy, you have a state of confusion that you go in before the, the, the connection with the physical body. So the spirit, as it's being prepared, the peri spirit starts to lose its form so it can acquire uh, the, the, the form and connect to the form of the new physical body. Remember, the physical body is, is a construction done cell by cell, molecule by molecule with the perispirit. So the perispirit needs to go into the very little form that will create a new spirit and starts developing from there together with the, the physical body that is forming. So it is a very long uh, process that uh, causes uh, much more confusion than the process of death. And the, the comparison here, that at death, you are released from slavery, you are free from your physical body, so you regain a lot of what you have lost when you are starting a new reincarnation. And when you are preparing to reincarnate, you are going to lose uh, temporarily some of the abilities that you have to prepare yourself for the new physical body. So the, the confusion is much worse. Okay. Okay, next. 340. Is a spirit's reincarnation a solemn moment? Does it accomplish this act as something serious and important for it. The spirit is like a traveler embarking on a dangerous journey, not knowing if it will drown in the waves beneath its vessel. Travelers know what dangers they are risking, but they do not know if they will die or not. 
The same applies to a spirit. It knows the kind of trials to which it will be submitted, but does not know if it will succumb. As the death of the body is a rebirth for the spirit, reincarnation is like death, or perhaps more accurately, like exile and confinement. Spirits leave the spirit world for the physical world, just as human beings leave the physical world for the spiritual world. A spirit knows that it is going to reincarnate, just as a human being knows that it will die. But they only become aware of this change at the moment it occurs. It is at this time that the confusion produced by the change takes hold and lasts until the new existence is fully established. The start of reincarnation is agony for a spirit. Okay, so it's a solemn moment. Yes, it is. Uh, when you are aware of it and you are a part of it, 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 it causes a, a party of sorts in the spiritual world for the spirit that is going to embark on this new journey. And we saw this in the book Missionaries of the Light with uh, Sigismund when he was preparing for his reincarnation. The, the spiritual world, the, his uh, companions went there, his friends, and uh, they, they were there congratulating him, um, giving him his, their support for the challenge ahead. Uh, and uh, it is... a. Uh, like the spirit says here, traveler embarking on a dangerous journey. A, a reincarnation is a dangerous journey because we are <laughs> coming into the unknown and we are not really guaranteed at our stage of evolution of any success, right? We may fail miserably in our reincarnation if we don't decide not to, to follow the, the right path, to follow the inspiration and the guidance from the, from the spirits. And then we go back to the spiritual world and we look back and we see a wasted opportunity. So, like they say here, um, it's a, it's going to a journey where you have no idea what, what's going to happen and the confusion, the anxiety and everything that takes you take with it, it's, uh, it's really uh, very, uh, can be very overwhelming. And, uh, Going back to Sigismundo, if you remember at the last moment, he was thinking about the work he was doing in the spiritual world and uh, second, with second thoughts about the reincarnation because he was going to leave the work behind. And uh, he was trying to find all sorts of excuses not to have to commit to a new reincarnation where he would have to be, uh, have as his parents, uh, a, a father that uh, he killed in a previous incarnation and the mother that was his lover in a previous reincarnation. And uh, he's, he stole the mother from the father. So, you know, it's, of course, it's not going to be a, an easy reincarnation. And he gets anxious and he gets, uh, he gets cold feet. So and all this can happen to the spirits. And many times it happens because you are going into the unknown. Okay. All right. 341. Does a spirit feel anxious regarding the probability of succeeding in the trials it is to go through in its new life before its incarnation? Yes, the spirit feels a great deal of anxiety since those trials will directly delay or hasten its advancement, depending on whether it fails or not. Oh, were, did you get nervous before the finals in your in college or in <laughs> high school? <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah. Can you imagine? And this was only one year. Uh, can you imagine? Or one subject. Can you imagine a whole re reincarnation? How anxious you are going to feel if you are aware of your responsibilities and the, the challenges ahead? Of course, a spirit is going to feel anxious, uh, a great deal of anxiety. So because uh, we know that these trials will affect our progress. 
and I, we, we know that we are not strong enough to, to overcome everything and uh, we make act on the contrary cause problems for ourselves and, and delay our, our spiritual progress, right? So yes, we, are, we get anxious. Okay. 342. When a spirit is about to reincarnate, is it accompanied by spirit friends who come to send it off from the spirit world in the same way that they welcome it when it returns? That depends on the world that the spirit inhabits. If it belongs to a world where affection reigns, spirits who love that spirit will be with it up to the last moment, encouraging it and often even following the spirit into its new life. Okay, so again, do we have a party there when we leave the spiritual world? <laughs> well, uh, depending on where we are and uh, on those who care for us are there surrounding us, of course, there will be a, a party. Uh, they will be there to say their goodbyes and uh, and uh, to 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 send us into our new journey with uh, with thoughts of love, of uh, encouragement. Um, you know, I, I remember when I left Brazil, I, we had a, a send off party and uh, we had like, I don't know, 50, 60 people there. Right. So they were all wishing, wishing as well. Of course, they didn't want us to not come back they would never expect us not to come back and we didn't also <laughs> but anyway um when we could come to a new reincarnation there is uh the 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 wishing of of our loved ones and our protecting spirits that we succeed and they will be there to give us all the support now of course when we are in the lower zones and we're surrounded by spirits that uh, have no other interest than on themselves the, there won't be a party because for some spirits don't want us to leave because of their um, selfish reasons and other spirits don't want us to leave because uh, we are having an opportunity that they wish they, they could have or something like that. So it depends on where we are. Okay. 343. Last one. When we see spirits in our dreams showing affection for us, and we do not recognize them, are these our spirit friends who follow us throughout life? Yes. In many cases, they come to visit you just as you may visit a prisoner in his or her cell. <laughs> I like that. We are in a prison here, right? The spirits yes. are telling us very clearly that this is a prison. Um, yes. We know that we have uh, loved ones in the spiritual world that are not present in this, this reincarnation, that are loved ones from previous lives. And they are there, if they can, uh, wishing for our success. And uh, if they have an opportunity to meet with us during our, our sleep, in our dreams, they will come to us. And sometimes we remember these meetings uh, with people that we don't remember exactly who they are. They're, they may be spirits that we never actually met in the physical life because they were never incarnated at the same time as we are. We were or, or left way before us, something like that. You know, I, I lost my, my, one of my grandmothers. I lost her when, she, when I was two years old. Um, I see her by picture. So I, she appears in front of me in my dream. Uh, I may not recognize her because I don't really, I never, I barely met her when I was incarnated. So that's an example of these meetings that may happen in the spiritual world that you may not remember or recognize who they are. But they will be coming to us. Okay, we are going to stop here. If anyone has any last comment or question. I, I have a I have a, a, a comment. Okay, yeah. when it says here, the spirit is like a traveler embarking on a dangerous journey, not knowing it will drown 
in the waves beneath the vessel. It took, you know, it took me back to that uh, the Homer, the the Odyssey, Ulysses. Oh. So, so uh, uh, you are a Ulysses. Everyone, everyone of us is a, in a way a Ulysses. Yeah. Going back exactly. and eventually going back home, I and mean, we eventually we're going to go back <laughs> home to the spirit world. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's very good. <laughs> Parker, like, exactly. I thought I thought of that. You know that you we know. are on an odyssey. That's yeah. We we are. We, we are. <laughs> H H Homer was on the right track. Yeah. I just needed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, so next week we are going to talk about, about this very delicate subject of yes, uh, abortion, yes, like union of yes. the body and of body and soul, abortion, which is you yes. know actually a subject that is being very discussed nowadays. Yes. Um, so do 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 we condemn abortion? Let's talk next week about it. Oh, I can I, I I can't wait. I can't wait because this is a hot yeah, that's a hot potato, you know that. Absolutely. Yes. It is a hot potato. That's it is yes. still being relate if you think of it, it's still being there at the desk, at the yeah. desk of the waiting for the Supreme Court to, you know, it's still a hot, it's really a hot potato. I can't wait till we to, get there. I'm going to find an excuse and leave it to Elmo for next week. Oh, <laughs> oh Elmo! Elmo, uh, did you hear that? Uh, Elmo, did you hear that? <laughs> Elmo, did you hear that? Okay. Oh my God. Do, we, do we have a third option? Uh, oh, wow. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. So um, we 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 don't have any lectures by the U.S. State Spiritist Federation these two Saturdays because it's uh, Christmas and New Year's, um, and uh, but we uh, SGNY the Monday meetings is closed also for these two weeks, these two next Mondays. Uh, but our studies will continue except for the Tuesdays that uh, will restart in January. Uh, but our Thursdays, we are here, and at Sunday, this Sunday, we're going to study, uh, we are going to have a Q&A session, mm -hmm. right? So bring your questions for Sunday, uh, yes, please. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, the, let me ask you, this. the Tuesday meeting does not follow the same format that we follow, am I correct? Uh, the I Tuesday meeting, question. yeah, and yeah, they, 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 they have a book, they, they follow the studies of a book always. They, they just finished the book uh, called Alert, that they did the whole book by the, uh, the uh, Joana de Angelis. Then they did a couple of uh, uh, three classes on uh, on the Paris Spirit, and then they did one on uh, life colonies, spiritual colonies, and then they broke they they break up for 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 December, and they start in, in January with uh, I I don't know exactly what book they're going to study. Okay. All right. Okay, Carol, can you do a final prayer? Sure. Thank you, John and everyone. Infinite creator and first cause, we are grateful to be together this evening for our study of the Spirit's book. Chapter seven, Return to the Physical Life. The reincarnation process is part of the natural law and the physical body is an instrument for us, for the spirit to improve and to move forward, to move closer and closer to perfection. It is a journey, a rigorous journey for the spirit to be in physical form. The protective spirits, however, are with us and even perhaps friends, loved ones and our spirit guides will will cheer us on, will help us to make the choice to really go for the, the new in reincarnation. We are grateful that we have this information through the Spirit's book. And we are grateful to our spiritual benefactors, the good spirits, the guides, the helpers, the teachers who are with us, helping us to receive this knowledge 
We are grateful for what we have learned and what we will continue to learn as we grow together in our studies. We give thanks to the spiritual benefactors who are with us day by day and inspiring us to move into a greater vibration, keeping our hearts open and our minds open each and every day to really embrace these studies and become more, more intricately prepared for what is ahead for us when we come back to this world in a form, in a body. May we continue with our prayers, with our studies and our mindfulness throughout the week. And may we honor this time of year, the, the light of Christ within during the Christmas season. We are greatly blessed for all that we have received and may we receive love, light and peace of Christ within us. May we share this with others, especially our family, friends and those who are in need, the suffering spirits and those who are are near us that we need to reach out to, to assist. As we close this portion of the meeting, may we go forth in safety and protection, knowing that we are protected, that we are in the right place at the right time. May we go forth now and remind ourselves to be beacons of light. Go forth now in peace, go forth now in peace, so be it.